Hello, combat sports fans, and welcome to the Fight Network Studios. I am your host, John Ramdean, and this is Fight News Now Extra. As usual, my friend Robin Black will be by to discuss the news of the day. Making headlines today, the Dragon extends his relationship with the UFC. Two of Japan's best are set to make their Zufa debut, and Tokino pulls out of his jiu-jitsu super fight with a former ADCC champion. That's the word on the street. Now we'll give you some of the details. After an impressive first round TKO victory over Mark Munoz in Manchester, former light heavyweight champion Lyoto Machida has inked a new contract with the Las Vegas based fight promotion. The 35 year old Brazilian sports an impressive 20 and 4 record and is certain to be a force at 185 pounds. The karate black belt is scheduled to meet former Strike Force and Dream champion Gegard Mousasi on February 8th in Brazil. Two of the Dream Promotion's most talented Japanese fighters both have bouts set as former deep lightweight champion Katsunori Kikuno and top-rated featherweight Tatsuya Kawajiri will make their UFC debut when the promotion holds their first event in Singapore on January 4th. Kikuno is scheduled to meet American submission specialist Quinn Mulhern, while the Crusher will tangle with Jose Aldo teammate Hakran Diaz, who sports an impressive 21-2-1 record. Kawajiri holds wins over Michihiro Omagawa, Eve Edwards and UFC lightweight title challenger Josh Thompson. And finally, former UFC middleweight slash welterweight competitor Husamar Palharis has been forced to withdraw from his grappling match with submission master Dean Lister due to injury. The Brazilian suffered a shoulder injury during training and will not be able to compete this year. The two were set to meet at the World Jiu-Jitsu Expo, which is scheduled for this weekend in Long Beach, California. Although Lister is now without an opponent, the other super fights are sure to excite submission wrestling fans. In action will be Jake Shields, Kyle Terra, John Fitch, Keenan Cornelius, Rafael Lovato and Jeff Glover, to name a few. Joining me now, Mr. Robin Black and Robin, two of Japan's most entertaining fighters, Tatsuya Kawajiri and former deep champion Katsunori Kuno, now joining the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And for the Crusher, it's been a long time coming. This guy was one of the best lightweights in the world, dropped down to 145 pounds, looks absolutely dominant. Why is it taking so long? This guy's 35 years of age. You couldn't have done this when he was 30? You know, in my estimation, I'm guessing, but I'm assuming that uh, Sean Shelby and Joe Silva have pursued him in the past. They know who all these guys are. You talk to these guys for five minutes or you hear them. You stand, they were here at our Fight Network party, chat with them a bit, and you hear them chatting with other people. They know who the minor league guys are somehow. They know who's uh, like the best guys in other countries. How they know that? I don't know, man, because it's impossible to follow all these fighters, and they are programming like fights on every single fight card. And I mean, there's two this week and one next week, and stuff's going to be added in Brazil. They know all of that, and they know everything that's coming up. So you know that they were pursuing these guys before. Sometimes I call you up in Japan, and I say, hey, come on over to America. And you're like, why would I do that? I'm having a great time over here. My family's Dream's paying here. me well. Exactly. I'm getting paid well. But the landscape has changed now, and the UFC is really, it's there or nothing if you want to make the big bucks. There's some exceptions, one FC and a few other things, but you got to go there, so maybe it's time now. Uh, for the Crusher style, Kawajiri, I think absolutely perfect for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. It's just rugged, durable, and uses his wrestling and ground and pound, and you put him inside of a cage, it's almost perfect. For Kakuno, a very, very different style than we've seen from a lot of fighters in, in the UFC, has that karate-centric background, which we've seen him yeah. use. It's not yeah. as if he even uses a traditional mixed yeah. martial arts style. He is rooted in that karate style. Uh, how do you think he'll fare? It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting, and that's a great point. We're actually going to, we were just calling uh, some deep from Japan. We're taking a break to chat, and we're going back in to call it later, which is really exciting. Some of the best action you're ever going to see in the world. You can always see it on Fight Network. But uh, yeah, with Kakuno, I mean, you're right. Uh, with that karate style, it's going to be interesting. We've seen him use it, but he literally comes out Get like this, out. you know, like, what and there's going to be guys looking at it saying, I want to fight that guy, you know, because oh, you look and it just slap. looks so dated. It looks so ancient, but he is a master. He's a master of it. And these martial arts work, you know, uh, karate, taekwondo, these martial arts work when you master it with a lifetime. You, and you use a lifetime at it. And it's not like he hasn't added the other tools. He just works from that basic stance. And you come in, and he is loaded, and he's ready, and he's been prepping for you to enter. And you enter, and he drills you with the right hand, and he knocks you unconscious. If he can have a couple of really good fights in the UFC at 155 pounds, people will be very excited. He, just like the Korean Zombie and a few other guys who have different styles, he's going to be one of these guys, if he can really get off in this first fight or two, who's going to instantly have a crazy fan base. From one fighter that 
has a karate style to another, Leo to the Dragon Machida upping his UFC contract. He's going to be here for a little while. Now at 185 pounds, looking sensational. Absolutely obliterating Mark Munoz and really effortless uh, performance from this guy. We now know he's taking on Gegard Mousasi. Are you surprised with this? Uh, we saw Mousasi in his UFC debut not look as great as we've seen him in the past. Uh, for Leona Machida, everybody knows who this guy is. So is this a, do you like this matchup? Of course, from a yeah. hardcore fan standpoint, yes, because matchups are very intriguing. Gegard Mousasi, a very young guy, has a bright future. But why now? Why does this fight need to happen right now, considering nobody knows Musasi? Yeah, that's an interesting one. We were talking about it, you and I, uh, on a chat a week or two ago, and this was the fight that we wanted to see because technically it's brilliant. But on the other hand, that's rarely why you see fights put together. It, you know, if we were putting this fight together, we'd put it together because we know it's going to be a spectacular technical matchup. The way these two guys interact physically is going to be amazing. Why the UFC would put it together is like, hey, what do you got to lose? You can build Musasi sassy up as somebody who used to be important and have your brand new 185 pound karate urine drinking killer go and beat him up or you can have Musasi just go and beat a guy who we all know is at the top of the division and kind of activate another 185 pounder. I don't care why they're doing it. I love the matchup. For Leota Machida, what do you imagine? Just one or two victories away. We know that Chris Weidman's going to be taking on Anderson Silva in December. You anticipate that Weidman will win uh, in that rematch. Then what? Do you put the dragon up against Weidman, or does he need a couple of victories at 185 pounds over Vitor Belfort yeah. or some of these other guys? Or is it just, you know what, let him get this victory over Musasi, and then you're fighting for the title? Yeah, I mean, unless Vitor knocks out Dan Henderson, which nobody's ever done, I don't see him. There's just too much dirt around yeah. him. You know, all the, the juice and the talking. He was busted before, and then TRT, and then saying he'd fight for the title without it. If you can fight without it, it means you don't need it. So there's too much dirt around him. Machida's the guy. If he can look fantastic, if he can finish Musasi, you go him and Weidman or Silva. I would be surprised, though, if Vitor Belfort knocked out Dan Henderson if he didn't get the matchup against the winner of Anderson Silva and Chris Weidman. That is all for now. More fight news now. Extra is still coming your way.